Hello. Give it a second and see if we get a few more people. Hi. Hi. All right. Well, hello. My name is Trish Anderson, and I am a fibers artist, and I'm based in Savannah, Georgia. We are in my studio today, um, one room of it. And I have my friend Colleen managing the comments over here. Um, and maybe we're having a hard time getting on there, but let me see. I'll say something and then, hi. Let's see, did that show up over there? I just want you to be able to comment if you um, have any questions or you you know want to know more about me. Um, and there's also a link in the description of this video that will take you to the website so that you can see more of my work and also um, a code for 15% uh, off all of my products. So I do a bunch of stuff, but my main thing is that I use this tool called a tufting gun. And it's pretty crazy. This is what is usually used um, when people are making hand tufted rugs, but I use it to make my artwork. And I'll show you this here so you can see it creates lots of different textures so i thought it would be fun today like as much as it is fun to see like what products and the end product i think it's really fun to see process and so i'm going to show you um how i use this gun and um so ultimately to make my designs and um art and the stuff that i make for the home and stuff like this t-shirt which can you see so it looks like it's yarn, but it's printed. Um, so anyways, let's get started. And like I said, if you have any questions, just drop it in the comments um, and we'll get going. Let's see. So I think the funnest thing to see with this is the yarn actually going through the um, fabric. So I'm gonna be on the back of this frame and you'll see one sec. So this is my big tufting frame. <laughs> and you could kind of see me through here. So this is essentially like a canvas. If you think of, you know, how painters paint paint on a canvas, but this is what I use as my canvas. And it's a special material made um, for tufting. And hold on, the magic's about to happen. Let me, so I'm back here, I'm threading my yarn through this gun. One second. And, takes me a little bit, there we go. All right, we're threaded. And also I will be posting other videos as time goes on of me doing this process so you can see more in the future of me actually moving this thing around. But for today's purposes, you get to see it coming through the front. And of course it's caught. Oh, let's see. There we go. I got it. Here we go, y'all. Isn't it crazy? So I can make different shapes. Isn't that wild? <laughs> So this is called a tufting gun. Hold on, I'll get back out from the frame. One, you push it out of the way. Oh, 
All right, and I'll show it more. Oh, where's my shirt? Oh yeah, you can get these on our site too. And there's different designs and I'm always adding different designs too. So if you can get a good look right here. But I did a whole series of the smiley faces and um, I have some other plans to do different shapes. Um, but this is, I want to show you a little bit closer of this gun. So this one does the loop pile, which means that the yarn is just going in loops, right? And then I have other guns that create a cut pile that means kind of like a shag, like, and I'll show you the difference. So see how these are, this is kind of shaggy. And then I leave drips and different things like that. So in my I'm always playing with texture and color and um, because I really find that that's um, super inspiring to me. And in that, I um, started making a line of products, not just these shirts, but I also have these floor mats. So I create the artwork using the tufting guns and then we print them on this super durable, machine washable material. And so these are perfect for all kinds of different utility areas like your kitchens, dining rooms, um, they're indoor, outdoor, as long as they're not in the sun, um, they'll fade if they're in the sun, like extreme sun. So I suggest like in porches and things like that. And, um, and this, you know, it's just, it's, I thought it was fun because it, you know, it has the fuzzy look of carpet here. This is better light this way. So it has a funny look, fuzzy look of carpet, but it's actually flat. So I call it sweepable shag. Um, but we, you can check it out on our site. Um, we have three different sizes, a larger like area size, a runner size, and then this, um, two by three, which is great for like doors or in front of sinks or, um, you know, different, I use them all over my studio because they're easy to sweep and I'm a mess. So I can't have anything really precious in here. Um, but we have all kinds of different designs and colors. And I actually started making these, um, in the, in the middle of the pandemic because I really felt like, you know, it's like we're all trapped in our homes and we wanted to, you know, I wanted to create something that could bring some joy to other people. Um, and I also know and something more accessible because I know that a lot of times like fine artwork can just be um, out of people's price point, at least a lot of times it is for me. Um, and so this these mats allow you to have a little bit of my world um, and incorporate it into yours. Um, I'm trying to think. Let me show y'all some other designs. It may be easier if I stand up. Um, this one is called the Flow, which is a really popular one. The light's kind of tough right now. Let's see. There we go. A little bit better. But they're kind of wild, you know, because, I mean, it really will, they're pretty trippy. Like once they're on the floor, um, they definitely fool the eye, you know, and you may think that it's carpet, but then you get up to it. I mean, half the time I'm trying to clean my studio and I have obviously yarn everywhere and I'll start sweeping thinking that I'm, you know, missing the thing and it's actually the mat. Um, so yeah, so they're pretty fun and skid resistant. Um, you can see like, they have like little grips on them and also pretty squishy too. So if you have concrete floors or any sort of hard surface that you're on a lot, it really helps her pad it and helps your feet. We have a question from her asking where you got the idea to digitally print them. Yeah, I, um, where did I get, somebody is asking, where did I get the idea to digitally print them? You know, I, um, I'm fascinated with combining uh, hand techniques with digital technology. I think that that's pretty interesting to be able to combine the two. Um, and I knew, 
that this printing process existed and I actually had made a similar product in the past using that technique. Um, and so once I started tufting, I just felt that it would translate so well. Um, and, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I just love the idea that it's still durable, you know, and washable and easy to use. Um, because sometimes the artwork can just feel too precious. Um, and I think that, you know, it's about being able to live with your things um, and not just have pretty things. Um, and so it's been fun to be able to develop new designs and um, we're constantly, or I'm constantly like making new um, designs that will print and playing around with different colors. And I'm trying to see if I have the other, um, did I show you this one up close? Let me show you this one. This is a popular design um, called the Magic OG. Um, so this one has just a ton of different colors. So as just in general, as a studio and as an artist, you know, I, um, of course I have the artwork and I have the products and I'm, I'm just constantly thinking of new ideas and new ways um, to make things. And so coming up soon, I'll be launching wool rugs. And after that, I think I'm going to do some wallpaper. So, um, you know, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And then most of the time I'm, I'm, you know, tufting all day long. So, um, I, I do post, you know, videos of myself uh, doing the process and um, I find it very meditative and very, um, you know, hypnotic um, to be doing it. So I hope that we can put some fun videos out there um, to create, you know, some chill. Does anybody have any other questions? Oh, what kind of soap? Yeah, so you can just, they can go in, you can spot clean. I'm lazy. So half the time I'm spot cleaning them with just a sponge and dish soap. But if you put them in the washing machine, they can go in on warm and just with normal um, detergent. And they, um, just no bleach, obviously, because bleach is... <laughs> not good for things with color, but no bleach. And then they just air dry flat. Um, and you know, I have other people that will just hose them off outside. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of different ways that you can clean them. Let's see what other kind of questions do we have? Um, how long is the runner? The runner is 60 inches long. Um, I'm five foot. So it's like, I'm five foot one. So you can see it's basically as tall as me. And then I don't have a bigger one over here just because they're so, um, it'd be hard to get it all in the frame. But that one is 46 inches by um, 66 inches. And we also have with these runners, like people, and I actually did it in my own home, where we'll put end to end to make a super long runner. Um, and then the smalls are the 20, they're 23 by 36 inches have a lot of people using them as desk mats underneath um, rolling chairs and you know to jazz up your office space um, let's see other questions thank you your tech coach I appreciate it um, let's see um, any other questions um, any other questions about my process or the product in general? Um, I know this is just kind of a brief overview of, um, you know, barely touching on everything I do, but I, um, I hope that you'll hit that subscribe button and come back and, um, you know, I'll be showing more in-depth videos of what goes on in our studio and, um, let's see, how long does the process take to tuft? So it takes... A long time. <laughs> I mean, it's certainly quicker than tufting is certainly because it's a mechanized tool It's certainly quicker than if I was hand punching every single piece of yarn. But um, I'd say to do, let's say, a design for one of these mats, it would take me a week. Um, 
at least um, because I have to make them very, you know, to scale so that when we take the photos in order to print them, that the yarn is to scale as well. Um, so it takes several days. I mean, I am self-taught question art and my self-taught, I am self-taught and actually um, this whole tufting world is fairly new to me. I um, started tufting, I'm horrible with time, but I think it was like four years ago. I don't know. 2020 doesn't count. Um, and I started because I, um, I had a whole nother career as a event designer and fabricator, um, and where I loved it uh, for a very long time. And it was super cool. I just was really craving a, um, a shift in my life, um, where my work would just be done with more intention. And I was super burned out. And so I discovered tufting. Actually, um, a friend sent me a video of people tufting in uh, rugs in India. So using it in a manufacturing way. And I was just immediately like, what is that tool? And I need to get one. And um, wildly enough, I'm from Dalton, Georgia, which is the carpet capital of the world. And so it was just interesting during this time of transition and kind of trying to figure out who I was again. Um, here's this tool that directly links me back to my roots. And so um, I'm self-taught. It took me about a year in between other projects to learn how to use the, use the gun and what materials I needed and um, how the frame needed to be built and all these different things. Um, but I, the first time I got a stitch to work, I cried because I hadn't felt so alive in um, such a long time. And so the rest is kind of history. And I've been tufting maniac ever since. And um, and still learning, always learning. And there's an incredible, I invite you to look up tufting. There's a huge um, tufting community now all around the world that's really grown rapidly in the past two years. Um, and that's been super special to be a part of as well. Let's see. Any other questions, y'all? I know I'm kind of probably talking a mile a minute. I'm getting excited over here. My favorite part about creating, gosh, that's a hard one, but you know, I think there's something really magical about dreaming up of some wild idea or seeing some wild idea and then the problem solving to figure out how to make it happen and then seeing this tangible thing <laughs> in front of you that you, um, you know, that was just a dream before. And so that really drives me. I love, um, I love finding solutions. I love seeing things through. Um, I, I love being able to make things that bring joy and inspiration to other people. Um, I, and I think that's where a lot of the color and the warmth of my work comes from too, is like, I, I really hope that whatever I put out in the world, um, really brings happiness to others. I've always been into textiles. Um, I've just always been into materials in general. So I've, whether it was paper or um, rope or, you know, I go kind of through phases right now. It's clearly yarn. If you, I mean, this is just a small view of um, the excess amount of materials that I <laughs> live with. Um, but I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I find uh, I love the hunt too. So like all this yarn that you see here, I um, have pretty much just collected over the past since I started tufting. So I, um, I'm what thirty eight years old, but I, you know, I wasn't into yarn um, so much as a material until I started tufting, and once I got into it, I mean I. I'm just always looking for a deal on yarn or collecting yarn or um, one of the main things that's been so special too is that because I, you know, this process relates back to my hometown, which I don't live, you know, in Dalton anymore, I obviously live in Savannah, but 
it's been really special because now people know that I'm tufting. And so all these, you know, people from my hometown are reaching out to me to talk to me about the tufting industry and the carpet industry and have given me yarn. And um, it's just been a wonderful way um, to connect back to where I'm from. Let's see, any other questions? Oh, <laughs> I always say Brett says it, it. My mama loved to have a wonderful room like a room like that. Yeah, I mean, I always say too, don't light a match though because it is <laughs> it's so dusty in here a lot of the time and, and full. But I, I'm very grateful to have um, this space, and I, I, it's actually an old house uh, that I work in. And the house before I lived here was also artist studios, and so I feel fortunate that throughout the years it's been conditioned with this um, wonderful, creative, and artistic energy. Um, and when I first moved here, I was moving from New York, um, actually, and so it was such a gentle place for me to land and for me to um, get back into my own personal art practice again. Um, and so when I set up this space, I also said, I'm gonna make it my dream world. I'm gonna cover it in anything I want to. And so um, I'll have to do a studio tour on here um, coming up, but I um, once I figure out how to move around with my camera, <laughs> Um, next video, maybe I'll do a, a studio tour for y'all so that you can see the full space. Um, it's not for the minimalists, but um, <laughs> it's my uh, it's my little bit of joy, bubble of joy, and I, I do love sharing it with people. Any other questions? Oh, my cat's trying to come over here. <laughs> Well, if there's no other questions, I mean, I just want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Um, you know, feel free to subscribe. Feel free to, um, if you ever want to shoot me an email or um, have any other questions. Let's see. What's the cat's name? Her name's Gracie. I'll see if I can get her over here real quick. Gracie. I mean, she, talk about cat heaven in here. So she sleeps on <laughs> yarn. Everybody jokes that I should make a calendar. So maybe this will be the next thing. Let's see. <laughs> Here she is. <laughs> Look, Gracie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. She loves it. Um, it's so funny. I mean, luckily, she, I'll be tufting sometimes. And I'm like, what's going wrong? Like, why is the gun not working? And then I'll look behind and it's because she's playing with my yarn. So it's fun. Sometimes I just say, you know, I'm here working for her. <laughs> but it's a good place to be. But thank you for everybody for being here. And um, please stay in touch and reach out if you have any additional questions. And thank you to YouTube for um, putting on this day. I mean, small businesses always need some love. And I'm just really grateful that um, I was invited to be a part of this day. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you being here. And, um, you know, now this is my first live on YouTube and I'll figure the lighting out because I'm definitely like half on, half off. Over here. So next time, you know, we're going to improve on, on my thing. Does it, does the kitty help design? <laughs> I mean, she likes to think she does, you know, um, I guess I should just start like whatever pile of yarn she's laying on is the color palette of the day or something like that. Um, but yeah, so this was really fun and, um, thank you and be sure I think it's Colleen. Thank you, Colleen, for helping me do the comments. And um, if you scroll up, she pinned at the top, I think, of the conversation. You can see a link and then that code for you to be able to get 15% off everything on in the shop. Um, and, yeah, we'll definitely do a full tour soon. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.
Bye.